The Holy Spirit is not only the comforter, but He is also the taskmaster of those who follow Jesus Christ. Those who have been confirmed by Him as being serious about following Him. I'm talking about those who have received the Holy Spirit, just like the disciples and the first followers of Jesus, those who have the Holy Spirit indwelling them and who can pray in tongues. If you cannot pray in tongues, you have not received the Holy Spirit. The Comforter, the Holy Spirit that indwells every true follower of Jesus Christ. He will teach us and He will guide us and He will discipline us. He will teach us obedience. Jesus Christ Himself, who showed us the way, learned obedience through what He suffered. We read about Jesus in Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7. In the days of His flesh, He offered up both prayers and supplications with loud crying and tears to the one able to save Him from death. And He was heard because of His piety. Although He was a son, He learned obedience from the things which He suffered. And having been made perfect, He became to all those who obey Him the source of eternal salvation. If we follow Jesus Christ, we will have to learn obedience. We will have to submit ourselves to the taskmaster, the Holy Spirit, and He will discipline us. It is for our own good. It is so that we can learn to submit ourselves to the will of God and that we can bear fruit for His kingdom and thereby bring glory and honor unto Him. That is His purpose. And if we do not serve His purpose, we are useless, worthless, we will get cut off and burned. Every child that He accepts, He disciplines. If we are not disciplined, then we are not children of God. If we do not submit ourselves to Jesus and obey Him, follow Him every day, then we cannot be useful and fruitful for His kingdom. We read in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 about the heroes of faith, those who overcame. Then we read in Hebrews chapter 12 about the discipline of God to which they submitted themselves. I read from Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, for consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you do not grow weary and lose heart. Jesus Christ Himself suffered. He offered prayers to the Father, crying out loud. He was in pain. He was in agony. But He endured. He was rejected. And He was persecuted. He was tortured and He was killed. But He endured the suffering. He endured the pain. And He overcame. 
he did the will of the Father. Even so, we must learn to submit ourselves in the same way and do the will of God. I read further in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 4. For you have not resisted to the point of shedding blood in your striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation which is addressed to you as sons. My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor faint when you are reproved by Him. For those whom the Lord loves, He disciplines, and He scourges every son whom He receives. It is for discipline that you endure. God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? But if you are without discipline, of which we all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Furthermore, we had earthly fathers to discipline us, and we respected them. Shall we not much rather be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time as seemed fit to them, but He disciplines us for our good, so that we may share in His holiness. All discipline for the moment seems not to be joyful but sorrowful, yet to those who have been trained by it. Afterwards, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. Therefore, strengthen the hands that are weak, and the knees that are feeble, and make straight paths for your feet, so that the limb which is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. Pursue peace with all men, and the sanctification without which no one will see God. See to it that no one comes short of the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springing up causes trouble, and by it may be defiled, that there be no immoral or godless person like Esau, who sold his own birthright for a single meal. For you know that even afterwards, when he desired to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place for repentance. Though he sought for it with tears. Jesus calls us unto utter devotion to him. Righteousness and holiness and obedience to his voice, to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And he will discipline us. Every child that he accepts will be disciplined. We will suffer. And we will learn through what we suffer. If you have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, and you've truly become born again, a child of God, you will be disciplined. But it is up to you and me to either accept that discipline, learn obedience, and live, or to reject the discipline of God and be rejected, be cut off and burned. If we are not transformed into His likeness, if we are not righteous and holy and utterly obedient to the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, then we are useless for the Kingdom of God. We are not worthy of Him and we will get cut off and burned. I read from John chapter 15 verse 1, the words of Jesus, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, He takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, He prunes, so that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, 
He bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up. And they gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. Just as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. These things I have spoken to you, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. His plans with us are good, but we have to remain in Him. We have to abide in Him. We have to submit ourselves to His discipline. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to have His way in us, submit to Him. And allow Him to change us, to transform us. We will suffer. Jesus Christ Himself learned through what He suffered. I suffer. Every true child of God who wants to follow Him suffers. Because He has to teach us. It's not my will. It is His will. It is not my ideas and my thoughts. It is His Spirit who guides us into all truth, into His ways, into His plans. It is God's way, it is not my way. And unless I deny myself, pick up my cross and follow Jesus Christ every day, His way, I will not enter His kingdom. If we resist the discipline of the Holy Spirit, we will get cut off and burned. If we do not allow Him to prune us, to correct us, so that we can share in His holiness, and that we can bear fruit for His kingdom, we will get cut off and burned. We will be disciplined by the Holy Spirit. It is an honor, and it is a privilege of a child of God to live under the discipline of the taskmaster, the Holy Spirit, the comforter that He sent to guide us into all truth. If we grieve the Holy Spirit of God, then we will get cut off and burned, like so many who have received the Holy Spirit. But they chose to disobey Him to go their own way, to follow their own mind, to run after people, to be conformed to the world, to live in sin, to look back to where they came from, and to desire the things of the world. They were cut off and burned. If we do not subject ourselves to the discipline of the Holy Spirit, we will not bear fruit. We will not enter the kingdom of God. There is no easy way of salvation. There is only one way, and that is God's way. Follow and obey the guidance of the Holy Spirit, or you will not find the narrow door. You will not enter into the kingdom of God. May we all learn to accept discipline, Obey the Holy Spirit and endure with Jesus Christ until the very end. May Jesus bless you.